Hi, this is Megan Poff and I'm the Field Office Chief at the USGS in Las Vegas, Nevada. On the first slope conveyance video, we talked about theory, high watermarks, and cross-section locations. This video will focus on surveying slope conveyance and direct measurements. More information on the slope conveyance method can be found on page 334 of USGS Water Supply Paper 2175. We flagged our high watermarks and determined our cross-section location already. Now we need to survey our slope conveyance. You can complete a slope conveyance survey using either a conventional level, total station, RTK or RTN GNSS, or even a simple laser level for very small flows. For this video, I will demonstrate how to do a simple survey with a conventional digital level. Just like with any other survey, follow the methods outlined in Levels at Gauging Stations, USGS Techniques and Methods Report 3-A19. You can use either a digital or an optical level. However, because we have to measure distances in addition to elevations, you're going to make use of the horizontal circle or azimuth on the gun as well as the gun's distance measuring capabilities. Before you start, make sure you have a current good collimation test for your instrument. You will want all of the accoutrements you typically take with you for any level survey, that is, a tripod, level rod, rod level, site-specific information such as a station description, and your field computer. Don't forget your rod person! Let's go to the site. Just like with any other level circuit, you will want to start your survey by doing a backsight on a reference mark. However, remember that we are also measuring angles and distances with this type of survey. We have to tell the instrument where 0 degrees, 0 minutes is located so our angles and distances will be correct. What's another name for 0 degrees, 0 minutes? That's north! However, we have options. It doesn't truly matter which direction you set to 0 degrees, 0 minutes, because we are surveying in an arbitrary datum. You have three main options. 1. Set the gun 0 to true north using a compass. 2. Set the gun 0 to upstream in the channel. Or 3. Set the gun 0 to the direction of the backside shot. I actually prefer option 3 because I can check my angle at the end of the survey very easily, but all options are valid. Whatever method you choose, point the gun in that direction and then rotate the bezel on the horizontal circle on the gun so you can set your 0 to that direction. Once you've set the bezel, don't touch it for the duration of the survey. Take the shot on your backside and also record the distance from the screen of the gun and the angle that you'll read from the horizontal circle. When you read the horizontal circle, read down to the half of a degree, which you will record in increments of 30 minutes. You're now ready to shoot all of the high watermarks. You don't have to repeat high watermark shots, and we also won't be doing a turning point for this simple, single setup circuit. Shoot each high watermark first, making sure to record not only the foresight, but also the distance, angle, and the quality of the mark. Remember that we are surveying high watermarks to the hundredth of a foot. After you've surveyed your high watermarks, you can survey the cross section perpendicular to the flow. We survey cross section points to the tenth of a foot, and you won't be repeating shots on these points either. I try to place the cross section in an area that is representative of the entire reach if possible. How many points should you choose for your cross section survey? Well, it depends. Keep in mind though that your entire measurement will be based on the area that you define from this single cross-section survey, so it will be in your best interest to keep the survey relatively detailed. Make sure you define the major changes in the shape of the channel as your rod person moves across the cross-section. For each cross-section point, record the foresight, distance, and angle. You can find more information on surveying both high watermarks and cross-sections in the high watermarks and cross-sections video in this series. At the end of the survey, shoot back to your starting point again and record the foresight, distance, and angle to help with quality assurance. You're done! You can now process the data through a spreadsheet to convert your angles and distances into northings and eastings. I've been showing you how to measure distances using the electronic function on your instrument, but what if the battery dies? It's good to know how to measure distances manually. Take a look through the scope of the gun. As you probably know, if you read the rod using the middle line, you can compute the elevation. Have you ever looked at the top and bottom lines, though? Those are stadia lines that are used for determining a distance. It's just a little math. Read and record the value from the top crosshair, then read and record the value from the bottom crosshair. Subtract the bottom from the top, multiply the result by 100, and that is your distance. However, if you use this method, Make sure you check the user's manual for your particular gun, because some optics have a different multiplier. 
If you have a more complex survey that will require you to move the gun because you can't see all of the points you want to shoot in a single setup, I recommend using a total station instead of the conventional level, or using a different indirect measurement technique altogether. Remember that the slope conveyance method often produces less accurate results and the computations do not provide any means for assessing the results when compared to other techniques. If you're already out at the site with all of your surveying equipment, it may be better just to add in another cross-section or two and compute a slope area measurement. Slope area measurements are discussed in detail in the slope area videos. For information on the theory behind a slope conveyance measurement, high watermarks, or cross-section selection, refer to the first slope conveyance video in this series. If you need help in the field, call your supervisor, surface water specialist, or indirect measurement specialist.